Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Yellow. Last time, we continued our trek up the cycling road, which is probably the less efficient way to go about it, but I think it's working out for us decently well. This time, we are going to be hopefully concluding our conquest of cycling road, because... I... I will be honest, I don't really like this area all that much. There's no money in fighting kids. Well, let me tell you, good sir. I was looking at my trainer card before starting the recording of this episode, and we have like 130,000 Pokemon dollars. Yeah. We are loaded. Loaded. Ah. Uh, anyway, I am recording this on the Monday before it goes up, and earlier this morning we got a bit of a surprise on Twitter. Nintendo announced that there is going to be a Direct on Wednesday, which should be the day this episode is going up. Which means, obviously, I haven't seen it yet, and there probably won't be an episode for a few more episodes now where I have seen the Direct, because I like to record these things in batches. So this episode and at least a few after this are all going to be recorded prior to the Direct, so if you want my thoughts on the... the uh, whole presentation, please be patient, because odds are I'm going to pre-record quite a bit, and you won't be able to see my post-direct reaction for a little while, so that's the idea behind that. Anyway, looks like War Turtle's actually holding its own decently well against these fighting types, which is really good. I'd really like War Turtle to get up there in the levels sooner rather than later, although I guess that goes for pretty much everybody, so I don't know how much that really counts for. Anyway, what do you want, kiddo? Alright, we are going to fight this guy next. Now, it's worth noting, there is a hidden item in this grassy patch right here, although, unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure where specifically it is, so hopefully I will be able to find it pretty quickly. And if not, then we'll just have to just wander around this grassy, this grassy patch a little bit, which shouldn't be too awful. Alrighty. Anyhow, let's just keep on going with this Machop right here, bring it down, and hopefully we can get level 34. I'd like to get level 34. And no, not quite. But we got decently close, I feel like. I don't know, honestly... Generation 1 is really, really hard to go back to just because of the way the battle UI works. Because the battle UI does not display experience points and it does not display the little icon that denotes whether or not you've already got a Pokemon registered in your Pokedex, which I think is really, really annoying when you're so used to it later on. Anyway, I should tell this rather amusing story about my... Pokemon playing recently in Pokemon Sun. So there's this global mission going right now, going on right now in Sun and Moon. And basically what you have to do is you have to hatch eggs. And ah, there it is. That actually wasn't too bad. The idea is the uh, any individual player needs to hatch three eggs to get a special reward from the event. I think it's a love ball in this case. And since I'm a big fan of Generation 2, I really wanted that. Route 16, Celadon City to Fuchsia City. As you can see, when we're up here, everything's good. As soon as we get there, then we're on the slope. So now we are free. A lot of trainers up here. Anyway, I had a whole bunch of foreign Pokemon from from uh, Wonder Trading. And I decided, you know what, I'll just use one of my foreign Pokemon to breed with my native Ditto, because, you know, why not? And so I grabbed a Japanese Mimikyu out of my PC, and I put it in there with my US Ditto. I bred three eggs, put Mimikyu back in the box, and then got to hatching them. Very first egg is a shiny Mimikyu, and, like, seriously, I thought I was dreaming or something, because, like, in the back of my mind, when I put 
the Japanese Mimikyu into the daycare, I was like, well, the chances are a little bit higher, so what the heck, right? But I obviously wasn't expecting a whole lot. And I got my fourth shiny in Pokemon Sun, which is ridiculous. Like, I've never had that much luck in a single game before. I think the most shinies I've ever gotten in a single game before has been two. But now I'm up to four, and that's just, that's just crazy. So we've got shiny Pichu, a shiny Munchlax, a shiny Pelipper, which is honestly probably the most impressive because that one was full odds. And now we've got shiny Mimikyu. And I don't even have the shiny charm yet. It's like, what is with my luck? I also got a, uh, a shiny Driftblim bouncy house thing in the Festival Plaza, but I doubt that's as rare as a real shiny. But I mean, if we want to count it, we can. Anyway, these guys up here on the top of this hill have a lot of poison types, and it's actually a little bit annoying because there's just... There's like eight trainers here just crammed into this one spot, so odds are the remainder of this episode is going to be spent in this one little corner of the world fighting all of these trainers. And unfortunately, Charizard's really the only Pokemon that can really take these guys down in a sufficient manner because the rest of my Pokemon are grass and poison and those just really are not good matchups at all which is unfortunate but it's also the truth so take it for what it is hey you just bumped me I was nowhere near you sir nowhere near you hey hey anyway got another biker right here because that's literally all that you're going to find on this route are people riding bikes and skateboards. So, let's see how well Slash can bring down this Weezing. Also, level 33, that's pretty high. Like, that's pretty surprising to me. And we are poisoned. That is very, very, very unfortunate. But luckily, we are actually pretty close to the end of this route so we're gonna be going pretty good here route 16 is probably one of the shortest routes in the entire region also worth noting the route we were just on route 17 one piece of grass and on this route i believe there's also one patch of grass like all the routes in kanto are like that pretty much it's really really bizarre i'm feeling hungry and mean but are you feeling it are you really feeling it uh, that was a joke to me before it was cool. Anyway, got a cue ball right here, a single Machop. Not exactly sure what this guy is planning to accomplish with a single Machop. But as evidenced by that, I'm thinking not too terribly much. Anyway, gonna slash him again, even though I probably could have put that slash to better use, because it's pretty much guaranteed a critical because of this game's broken calculations. Bad, bad, bad. Indeed. Come out and play, little mouse. Oh my god, the corny dialogue in Generation 1, like, it's always just, it makes you cringe inside a little bit, but it's also just really funny and I guess, in a way, iconic. I don't know, I feel like their localization for Pokemon games got drastically better once you got to Generation 2. I felt like a lot of that dialogue was a lot more... I don't know, natural? I feel like a lot of the dialogue in Generation 1 is just really awkward when taken at face value. Anyway, Leer actually fails on us, which is funny. This thing did exactly nothing to us, and down it goes. And I think Charizard's really close to level 40, which is pretty crazy. So I think we just got these two guys left. What do you want? I want to fight you and beat you and take your money. Because that's how this game works. That is indeed how this game works. Alright, we have a Grimer coming out. And hopefully we'll be able to bring it down pretty quick. Uh, I'm really excited that we're almost back in Celadon City, because honestly, these past several episodes now has just been trainer after trainer after trainer. And honestly, it's going to be that way for a little while yet, but it's going to be really nice getting into some story stuff, 
and also just having a nice change of pace, because I gotta be completely honest with you guys, I'm getting really, really tired of the color green, because we've been spending a lot of time recently outside of towns, so which means everything's just green. And it's not even like a really appealing deep green like Celadon City, it's just like this really bland, pale green. Anyway, Charizard gets level 40 right there, which is absurd, and I suppose technically we could skip this trainer. We could actually go back around to that other guy since he moved, but I'm a completionist, and I want to fight every single trainer on this route. Alright. Uh, it's a little tedious fighting the same three Pokemon over and over again, but as I said, there is a change of pace coming very, very soon, so we should be pretty good on that front. Also, this particular area holds a bit of a special place for I feel like a lot of players of Fire Eye and Leaf Green, because honestly, since you can cram a lot of trainers on screen at once, I feel like this is a very, very popular spot to use the Versus Seeker. Which, by the way, should totally come back to the series because we really, really, really need a good way to rematch people in Sun and Moon. Because fighting the same five, six trainers over and over and over and over again in Sun and Moon gets boring. And I feel like it's pretty understandable that it gets pretty boring. Anyway, getting Ivysaur out here. And we can make use of Razor Leaf a little bit more. I'm really, really glad we got a hold of Razor Leaf. That was something that I felt we were severely lacking and missing prior to obtaining it. Anyway, we got this cue ball out here. And now, is there anything hiding over this way? No, there is not. However, there's another Snorlax. What do you have to say? Cycling Road is a downhill course by the sea. It's a great ride. Indeed. Now, is there anyone up here of value? Got this kid. We're going riding together. And this kid, I'm going for a ride with my girlfriend. I mean, you know, lifestyle choices. I'm cool with that. Looking into the binoculars. It's Celadon Department Store. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Anyway, when we head outside here, we are going to be greeted by this Snorlax. Now, a lot of people like to catch both Snorlax because they're finitely available in the game. However, I... Oh, for a second I thought I deposited the Poke Flute. That would have been awful. I really have no interest in catching this Snorlax because we already caught one and got its data and I'm never ever going to use it. And this is a Let's Play, so it's not like I'm going to be coming back to this file after the Let's Play is over and regret that we don't have it. So, I'm just going to knock this one out, because I'm really just not interested in owning it. Like, I, I just really feel like there's no point in having two. So, we are going to knock out this Snorlax. Anyone who is not a fan of this decision, make sure to look away now, because otherwise you might be a little bit bothered by what's about to happen. Anyway, I'm going to switch over to Nidorino, because Nidorino is packing Double Kick, which does a decent amount of damage to Snorlax. Hopefully it'll even take it out in one shot, just so we can be done with this particular creature. Wow, it actually does not do very much. That's impressive to me, actually, how it can take multiple Double Kicks. That's crazy. Alright, and it does not use rest, thank goodness. That means we can knock it out with one last kick. Single kick this time. And Ivysaur actually gets to level 31, which is really nice. With a big yawn, Snorlax returned to the mountains, and it will never respawn because this is an old game and there's no respawning. Anyway, right around here is something of great importance. We want to use Cut right here, because coming through here, we've got the one grassy patch on this route, and we can also cut through this building. How'd you get in? Good effort. I think I always put forth a good effort, at least I like to think I do. Anyway, right inside this building, we have this kid. Oh, you found my secret retreat. Please don't tell anyone I'm here. I'll make it up to you with this. 
Oh, screw me. Are you serious? I'm out of space. Alright, um... Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna use both these PP ups. I'm gonna use... You know what? I might as well use them both on Thunderbolt, because Thunderbolt's a really, really, really good item. There we go. Now we have space. Please don't tell anyone I'm here. I'll make it up to you with this. And we get HM02, which contains Fly, which is awesome. And we have a Fero right here. And I think this is a world map? Yes, it is. So yeah, you can see, we've gone all the way from... From, uh, how do you scroll this? We've gone all the way from... You know, I don't even know how this works. We've gone all the way from Lavender all the way around south through Fuchsia, and we're already almost back to Celadon. I think you all know how this region's laid out by this point. Anyway, before we do anything else, I want to teach this to Charizard, because it is a good move, and I want Charizard to know it. Let's see, what are we going to delete? I think we will delete Rage, because honestly, it's pretty garbage compared to other things that Charizard can get. Alright, now Charizard is capable of flying. Very cool. And now we can head back over this way and we can make our way to Celadon, which is going to be awesome. Alright, it's going to loop right on over here and then we can cut down this tree again. Because apparently walking inside is all a tree needs to just completely regrow. And here we are in Celadon City once again. I think I'm going to head back to the Pokemon Center and heal really quick, just because we took quite a bit of a beating on that route back up here. And then I think we'll be good to head off the episode. So let us heal up real quick. Uh, aren't you guys glad that I cut out walking back to Lavender Town on the... Uh, routes between there and Fuchsia, because man, that was... that was brutal. You get so used to the running speed in later generations, you know? Anyway, I think with that we are going to end things off here. So, this past episode of Pokemon Yellow, we made our way back here to Celadon City, and we also taught Charizard Fly, which is super duper awesome. And next time on Pokemon Yellow, I think before we do anything else, we should go shopping. Trust me, I have a good reason. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Eriwara! Punch Pokemon! Takasa! 1.4 meter! Omosa! 50.2 kg! Pro Boxer no Tamashi ga nori utsutte iru! Punch no speed wa, Shinkansen yori mo hayai!